All right, here's part one of chapter 15, which talks about antimicrobial drugs. Now, there is a lot in chapter 15 um, because the topic is drugs that will kill microbes. And a lot of the material presented in the textbook is specific to drugs, right? Which drugs? And we're really going to focus more on the big picture. And so definitely use your PowerPoint notes as you go through the chapter because we will hit on the important parts in the PowerPoint notes. So antimicrobial drugs are those compounds that are used as therapy. All right, therapeutic compounds that kill microbes or inhibit their growth. And these were first identified um, officially in uh, and around 1928 by Alexander Fleming. He's officially the one who has been given credit for identifying penicillin. All right, and how he did this was he was uh, doing research with microorganisms and he noticed a plate that was contaminated with fungus and he almost threw it out thinking well this project is um, ruined there's contamination but then he noticed how there was a zone of clearing around the bacteria so most of it had bacteria growth and then where the penicillin was the penicillium the mold the fungus growth there was an area where there wasn't any bacteria growth. And so that's when he realized that there was something that was being produced by that fungal colony, a very large colony on his auger plate, that in, was inhibiting the bacteria growth. And so his discovery has really transformed how, or really transformed modern medicine in general. So, um, different ways to categorize antimicrobial drugs is going to be what they treat. So, antibacterial drugs in general treat bacterial infections, antiviral drugs, viral infections, antifungal, fungal infections, and then antiparasitic are going to treat um, protozoan and helminth infections, those organisms that are classified as parasites. So when we look at drugs, there is a spectrum of activity. And two very broad categories are broad spectrum drugs and then narrow spectrum drugs. And you can see the definition here, but looking at this figure, which is um, not from your textbook, but I think it gives a good illustration of what broad spectrum are versus narrow spectrum. All right, narrow spectrum have a very narrow spectrum of activity. So you have different groups of organisms up here at the top. All right, mycobacterium gram negative bacteria, major category of bacteria. Gram positive, another major group of bacteria, the chlamydias and rickettsias. All right, polymyxin is going to be very specific for a small number of gram negative. Tobramycin very small spectrum that hits the mycobacteria, which is um, the uh, genus that causes tuberculosis and leprosy. And then just a few organisms here within the, the large category of gram-negative. And then the carbo carbapenums here. All right, now carbapenums target nearly all of gram-negative bacteria and a large majority of gram-positive. The tetracyclines, all right, you've got this huge line here. These two are definitely considered broad spectrum. Penicillin's also um, broad spectrum because it hits nearly all of the gram positive, some chlamydias, and um, um, sorry, gram negative bacteria. Sulfa mites. Um, what are sometimes just referred to as the sulfa drugs, cephalosporins, also fairly broad in their ability to target different organisms. All right, so that's what's, that is what is meant by broad spectrum versus narrow spectrum. And of course, you've got down here, are these part of 
normal flora. Do you have normal flora in your gram negative? Yes. In your, sorry, do you have gram negative bacteria in your, as part of your normal flora? Yes. Gram positive? Yes. So if you take a tetracycline, all right, there's a good chance that you're actually going to kill off a lot of your normal flora organisms. And so what you want to try to do is minimize the amount of good flora, good bacteria that you kill when you're trying to treat an infection. So characteristics of ideal antimicrobial drugs. These really are kind of listed throughout your chapter. Um, but again, this table gives a nice condensed version of the information. Antimicrobial drugs should have selective toxicity. We'll talk about that a few slides down. But that means you can focus the toxicity of the drug to the microbe and not to the host cell. You're sick, you take a drug, you don't want to make your body more sick but rather kill off the bacteria that are causing the problem and leave you in a healthier state. All right, there are terms which we'll look at microbicidal and microstatic, and that is whether or not you kill the organism or you just kind of level it out and make it stop doing its thing, but they're still there. You'd rather kill off those bacteria or microorganisms. All right, relatively soluble, functions even when highly diluted in body fluid. And that really is so that you can take a minimal amount of drug, but let it still be very effective. And then has a, um, what might be referred to as a long shelf life. All right, remains potent long enough to act. It's not broken down or excreted permanently. You don't want it to break down in your stomach because of the stomach acid because then it's not going to go anywhere to be helpful. All right, you don't want it to go directly to the kidneys and get excreted, or else, again, it's not in the body long enough to actually do its function. All right, it does not lead to the development of antimicrobial resistance. You all should know that there are issues with organisms being resistant to drugs, and so we want to avoid allowing this antimicrobial problem to increase. Right, also complements or assists the activities of the body's defense systems. So we've talked about the immune system. All right, and you should recognize that when you take an antimicrobial drug for an infection, that's working alongside of your immune system. And you would not want to take a drug that would actually inhibit your immune system, but rather, you know, complement it, add together or even assist in the activities of that immune response. Right, it remains active in tissue and body fluid, so it can actually do its thing. It can actually get delivered to the site of infection. And then, of course, this is a big one. Um, it's been in the news a lot. Reasonably priced. Right, how much does that drug actually is go? How much is that drug going to cost you to buy? Um, sometimes you can go to the pharmacy and um, if you have insurance, which of course not everyone does, you can get an antibiotic for like $4, $2. And I'm so thrilled when that happens. All right, but then even with insurance, sometimes medications cost hundreds of dollars. And if you don't have insurance, all right, there's a financial issue there, potentially. And then if you get sick with a relatively minor bacterial infection, but you still need antibiotics, even though, you know, a very basic prescription of penicillin or augmentin or um, tetracycline, very, very common drugs, all right, could actually cost you a significant amount of money. It right, also does not disrupt the host's health by causing allergies or predisposing the host to other infections. So there are drug allergies out there. Penicillin is a big one. And of course, you don't want to take the drug if you're going to be allergic to it. And sometimes these allergies are actually life-threatening. All right, so a couple of questions to answer before you start drug therapy. What are you trying to kill? Right, what's the nature of the microorganism? 
is it really bad? Is it drug resistant? Is it gram positive? Is it gram negative? So it is helpful to know a little bit about what you're trying to kill off, if not everything. And then how, all right, how easy is it going to be to kill the organism? What is the degree of the organism's susceptibility or sensitivity to a particular drug? Right? Is it actually even going to be effective? And we'll talk about how clinicians can actually identify that. And then who? Who are you treating? All right, what is the overall health of the patient? Is this patient, like me, maybe relatively healthy and just has a simple ear infection or a simple case of pneumonia? Or is it someone who is immunocompromised, who has COPD and now has pneumonia? already has relatively severe respiratory issues and then you add pneumonia on top of that. Can be very different ways, different approaches on how you treat an infection is the who. All right, so goal of antimicrobial drugs is to disrupt cell processes or structures of the different microorganisms. If we're talking about viruses, then you want to inhibit viral replication. All right, then we can also interfere with enzymes that are required to synthesize or assemble macromolecules in order to actually allow for the creation of the new microorganism. All right, we can try to destroy structures that are already formed in the cell. So really talking about bacteria, fungal or protozoan organisms in this case. And then also selectively toxic. I mentioned that just a couple of slides ago. All right, we really want to be able to kill or inhibit the actions of just the microorganism, but not us, not the cells in our body. If the action of the drug is to inhibit protein synthesis, fantastic. But what happens if that um, mechanism of inhibiting protein synthesis then uh, crosses over to our cells and now our cells no longer synthesize proteins. Well that could actually be life-threatening for us. All right we don't want our cells to be able to stop metabolism but rather selectively target the microorganism. All right um, this slide is not in the right spot. We'll talk about that one later. But then um, ways to target anti or classify antimicrobial drugs is their action. All right, and in terms of the action, there are two big categories of bacteriostatic and bactericidal. The bacteriostatic, it does that. It, it makes them static. They stop. They cling. All right, got static cling. Two things stick together. Um, bacteriostatic stops the bacteria from growing, all right? So it doesn't necessarily kill them, but it stops them from growing and may stop them, stop an infection from getting worse. This tends to target bacterial protein synthesis as well as metabolic pathways. Um, and then there are bactericidal organisms that will kill bacteria. The cidal there is death. And this is going to target bacteria cell walls or the plasma membrane, and that will call us lysis of the cell or the nucleic acid, and that disrupts all of the cellular function from that point forward. All right, so uh, whether or not a drug's bactericidal or whether it's bacteriostatic, there are different properties that are based on the pathogen type, the dose, how long are you going to take something, or sorry, how much of the drug are you going to take, the length of the drug regimen, is it three days, is it seven, ten, two months, all right, and the pathogen load, how much bacteria are you actually dealing with, what was the inoculating dose, and then the route of administration, are you going to give it intravenous, where it is directly, it's a a pure solution directly put into your bloodstream where it's then going to circulate relatively quickly and easily or is it going to be an oral dose where you have to ingest it, it has to go through the stomach, it has to 
try to be absorbed then through your intestinal lining and then get to the 